<laughs> There's an old joke in the Jesus movement that was, if God could give you anything, I mean, really, if he just came up to you and said, ask of me what you want, or even command me, and I will do it. The question is, what would you do? You know, and most people go, well, you know, if I had three wishes, <laughs> and they go with the genie in the bottle routine, you know, and, well, my first wish is I wish that I'd have more wishes. You know, my second wish is I wish that I'd have unlimited wishes. And my third wish is I wish that the unlimited wishes would never have consequences. So then you recover. <laughs> That's the way I thought of them. But whenever someone gives you something, even like when God gives you his love, it's not meant for you to abuse or to go out of your way to confuse it with what do I get out of it. Maybe it's meant to be for someone else. I think so. Now, I'm not sure, but, you know, that's the way I was raised, you know. I mean, I was I was in the Jesus movement, so I didn't really have any, any church background. I hadn't been in any denomination or church or any kind of religious upbringing at all. So the only thing I really knew was <coughs> Jesus. The only thing I really understood was what he said and what he did and what he spoke to me and how he lives in me. And as he led me into reading about, you know, the church and the church history and all the denominations and all the different non-denominations and all the different ways that people have expressed their love and faith to God, I, I didn't find them as being like, ooh, weirdos, but, you know, sincere people, you know. Sometimes sincerely wrong on some things, but not anyone 100% wrong. And as a matter of fact, it seemed like that everything I ever studied about the church and people was pretty consistent with what the church and the people were like that followed Jesus. <laughs> so, frankly, I didn't see any difference between them then and us now. And because of that, you know, there comes a time when God comes to you and asks you, well, maybe he just gives you an impression, but for me, he asks, you know, what would you like? You know, what do you want? And I said, stupidly, I want to be like you, Lord. You know? <laughs> you know, and God did it, you know, I mean, in one way. You know, there was things that when I said I wanted to be like him, I wanted to understand like he understood the people's heart. To be able to answer like he answered, you know, the way he did, like, right to the heart of the matter without destroying the person, you know, to be able to share the right word in the right time, in the right setting, so that the person would be oh, convinced either they would, you know, walk away sad without wanting to beat you up, or they would want to think about what you said and share maybe with you some more, or else think about it for a while and determine on their own what they're going to do about it. So in a lot of ways, you know, Lord led me to, you know, learn a lot. And then choosing the way that he walked, there were lots of sufferings involved in times alone. So I got what I wanted. But what do you want? You know, if God said, hey, you know, prove me now herewith, if I will not open up the heavens and pour out a blessing upon you. Do you go out of your way to prove it and then abuse it? Do you go out of your way to get, oh, I tithe, so I get all this extra stuff. Because God will give it to you. Will you choke on it? <laughs> will it be for your own benefit? Hmm. Will it be like a bag of gold with a hole in it? What are you going to do about it? If God would give you what you ask. You see... It's not meant to be promises only that are claimed and were named and put into your life, you know, so that you could be like, oh, the Gentiles exercising lordship over one another. Remember, that was a warning Jesus said. So, if you're a Gentile, and even if you're not a Gentile, if you're acting like a Gentile because you're exercising lordship over someone, Can you kind of like maybe reread that section? It might have something to do with you if you're in charge. God help you.
the more that I see the end of the age, the end of the world coming, the less I am confident of man's ability to understand and to reason and to rationalize the faith of Jesus with the fact of his life. Because Jesus committed himself always to his Father, and we don't seem to have that commitment to give him our life and let him live through us as much as we say we do. We do the right religious things. We go to church, you know, we do our, our works, but where's the attitude at, you know? Are there people in the body of Christ that you, you know, blessed are the poor because I'm not one of them? Blessed are the meek because, you know, I'm not meek. I want to go out there and, you know, stand for the righteousness of God. I want to assert my rights and my authority. I have my guns and I have my freedom. Blessed are the ones thirsting after righteousness because we're going to make it work. No matter what, we're going to force democracy down their throats. Okay. Bless our the what? Why? I mean, if you're going to do it all, what do you need God for? So be careful what you pray for. Be careful what you ask for. Because if you trust the Lord to give you what He wants, you might commit the keeping of your soul into His hands so He can determine what's best for you and give you those things that maybe you could pass on to someone else. I know that's what I wanted all my life. And <laughs> it took 33 years or more for the Lord to bring about that quality to my life that could give to others. Now, I did serve in the Lord, you know, all those years. I did do ministry and I did do this and that and the other thing. But the reality of the maturity didn't accomplish itself until, you know, the day that God really began to bring, you know, the compassion, the grace for grace, the mercy for mercy, the reaching out to touch and bind up the wounds of those that are hurting. Until he had done that, there really was no maturity in my life. Though I knew <laughs> the scriptures from forward to back and sideways, I, I have my hermeneutic and homiletic down, I have my eschatology, I have my, you name it. You know, can argue seven ways of sideways, you know, and doesn't accomplish much, you find out, in the long run. But when it comes to doing, maybe we should take a second look at what Jesus did, as opposed to what we keep saying we ought to do. No limit. Unlimited supply. That is my law. Oh, the unlimited supply, and oh, the poor blocked channels. Will you feel this? And there is no limit to my power. But man asks and blasphemies me in asking. Such poor, mean things he asks for. Do you not see how you wrong me? I desire to give you a gift, and you are content with the poor, the mean, the sordid, and the selfish. You ask for your own lusts to spend upon yourself. And you are insulting me, the giver. Ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. How can I fulfill this promise of my work, and not yours, to consider if you have such little faith, and you expect such menial things as the things of this world, and seek not the kingdom of God? But rather, ask for great things, and seek to follow and find me, your giver, in the midst of what you're asking for, and you'll find that all these other things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his very soul?